We just had our best look yet at Hogwarts Legacy's open world and just how much we'll be able to explore when the game hits in early 2023. The recent gameplay showcase may have focused on traversal around the open world, but in doing so, the developers also revealed quite a few gameplay elements we'll encounter as we explore. Wait, hold on, is that an enemy under the water here? Swimming? Possibly confirmed? When it comes to open world video games, fans just can't contain their excitement when they see a vast map filled with various points of interest and places to explore across a world they're passionate about. Game Director Alan 2 confirmed that we'll have full access to explore fairly early in the game after reaching a certain point in the narrative. And from the moment the open world is open, you can go anywhere, possibly even stumbling into areas where you're way outmatched with your current gear and level. You see, for months now, fellow Hogwarts Legacy YouTubers and fans on the various Reddit and Discord pages have taken all the bits and pieces we've seen from various trailers and the gameplay showcases to piece together a number of different maps that try and show just how big the open world and Hogwarts itself will be. They've already done a far better job than I could at showing off the size and locations of the map itself, but this video will be more focused on what we'll be doing within this vast open world that includes Hogwarts and the surrounding Scottish Highlands. You see, the physical size of the map is only one piece of the puzzle here. After all, you could have an enormous map and world to explore, but if there's nothing fun to do within it, what's the point? Screen Rant published an article in 2019 ranking 25 open world games by their physical size alone. Now, their numbers weren't exact, and there are various scaling techniques at work to compare across different games, but even so, the article gives a pretty good idea on just how big the physical space is in some of these games, especially if you've had the opportunity to play them yourself and know how big the world's felt to you. Just a few notable ones here from the list. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at 28.9 square miles. Red Dead Redemption 2, close to the same, 29 square miles. GTA 5, 31 square miles. And The Witcher 3 at a whopping 84 square miles. More than double GTA 5 there. Now, as someone who's played all four of those games and beaten three out of the four, I can tell you that all of them felt like vast open worlds with plenty to see and do. So even though The Witcher dwarfs them all in sheer physical size, I don't feel as if any of the others suffered by having what is a significantly smaller map. So while we're getting more and more a picture of what Hogwarts Legacy looks like in terms of the physical map size, what remains equally important is all the stuff that we'll be doing within that map. Now, in addition to the flu flame icons, we got a good look at several others that give a few hints about various gameplay opportunities across the open world. We'll start with one of the obvious ones, which is the leaf icon here. Now, this one represents the puzzles that are left behind by Merlin. Now, I know a few of us out there have thought that Merlin is going to be closely tied to the ancient magic within the game, and I still think that's very possible. However, in addition to this leaf icon, we also see a dedicated ancient magic icon here. So this is the actual symbol of ancient magic itself. It's the very same symbol featured in the Hogwarts Legacy logo. Now, this whole area looks to be much larger than these leaf icons and not just a simple puzzle. I'm thinking these will likely be more extensive ruins or even full-on Zelda-like dungeons to explore. Game director Alan 2 even told us specifically what will be rewarded for the Merlin puzzles and the ancient magic areas right in the gameplay showcase. So when you go out into the open world and you see, see those icons, whether they're on the mini-map or on your map or off in the distance, those things are opportunities to say, like, I want to increase my inventory capacity. There are puzzles left behind by old wizards, you know, that you can solve that actually grant you those. Uh, if you see ruins off in, the, off in the distance and you visit them, you might find opportunities to actually expand and learn about your ancient magic. We also have beast dens throughout the world, and initially I thought they were all noted with this claw icon, and yet we also see a spiderweb icon later in the showcase right here. So it seems that at least some of the beasts can have different icons. As for enemy camps and the poachers that have already been confirmed for the game, Alan mentioned these characters could be hoarding valuable magical resources. My guess is these locations are noted with the skull icon we see here. This would of course match up nicely with the skull mask enemies we've already seen in the various trailers. When it comes to exploration, one mechanic that's already been confirmed is the seeking out and discovery of the various scroll pages we'll be able to collect and add to our field guide. After, of course, we find them with the Revelio spell. These appear on the map as a small scroll with a question mark, and I find it at least somewhat peculiar to see these showing up on the mini-map. I'm not sure if there's some sort of dev magic here or perhaps the use of a Felix Felicis potion, but it seems strange to me that these would just be directly noted on the map, I mean, right when you go by. Perhaps we have to complete another task or first find a clue before these icons show up on the map, 
or maybe you actually go to these icons and then they tell you somewhere else where you have to go to reveal the page. Curious to see how that one will be handled. Now directly behind this first scroll icon, we also get a look at what appears to be some sort of cave-like structure that is just begging to be explored. Don't really know what else to say about that one, so if you have some thoughts, let me know in the comments below. A bit further in, we see a speech bubble icon, which almost certainly indicates an NPC we can talk to and possibly even get a quest from. Speaking of quests, I'm guessing this icon here denotes the various side missions we can tackle with the larger one outlined in yellow, possibly being our main quest at the time. During this showcase, the minimap even showed the exact location of loot and treasure throughout the world. Now this one we know is an effect from Felix Felicis, as this image and description here appears on the game's official website. It reads, use this potion to reveal gear chests on the minimap for one in-game day, resulting in a particularly rewarding journey as you explore Hogwarts and the surrounding areas. Yet another icon we saw in the showcase is this one here, which appears to be marking a graveyard. Now what's interesting about this one is just when we fly over, we see a few different red markers appear, which could indicate in theory, possibly, maybe they've just appeared in this location to attack. Now later on in this swamp area, we get a brief glimpse at a labyrinth-like icon, possibly a maze or a puzzle in the area. And I have to say, all that we're seeing here leaves me very encouraged so far. When it comes to Hogwarts Legacy and how it may compare to other open world games, during the development for The Witcher 3, CD Projekt Red came up with an open world concept around a very specific amount of time as it relates to player exploration within the world. As they carefully monitored early play tests for the game, they took note of players and how they interacted with different points in the open world. In a no-clip documentary, they referred to this as their rule of 40 seconds. The concept is pretty simple. As a player, you can travel in any direction, on foot, in the open world, and within 40 40 seconds or less, you should encounter a gameplay element that catches your attention. This could be as simple as an enemy or two, a cavern to explore, a pack of animals, or an NPC in need of help, or a full-on quest. It remains to be seen how closely, or if at all, Hogwarts Legacy will follow this specific rule, but the concept really helps to shine a light on the importance of focusing on the richness of the world itself instead of only focusing on the size of the map. And given what we've seen and discussed so far with Hogwarts Legacy, I'm hopeful there will be plenty to do and explore. Now, one key component that plays a major role within open world video games is just how you will traverse through the world itself and how quickly you can get to various points of interest. So in addition to traveling on foot, Hogwarts Legacy has also confirmed broom flight as well as animal mounts that can be used both on the ground or in the air. Brooms will provide a quick way to get around the open world and include a boost meter, however they don't do as well at flying high without being upgraded first. They've also confirmed mounts for the grab horn, hippogriff, and thestral with the latter two having the added benefit of flight in addition to ground transportation. The animal mounts will not have have a boost meter like the broom, but can fly higher right from the start without any penalty. And then there are the flu flames. These are scattered across the open world and within Hogwarts itself. They'll serve as our fast travel points to quickly get from point A to point B. In the second gameplay showcase, they appeared as white icons on the minimap prior to being discovered. Once discovered by the player and subsequently lit, the icon transitioned to a light green. You see, in addition to all of these icons we've talked about, Alan also mentioned there will be some quests tied to the game's day-night cycle. And of course, missions that happen at specific times of day aren't unique to Hogwarts Legacy, but those sorts of missions always help that world to feel more alive, more believable. They've also confirmed seasonal weather changes, and much like the books and films, Alan said these are used as narrative markers to show visually how we progress through the story. Throughout this little exploration scene in the gameplay showcase, we also encounter several different enemy types including goblins and wild beasts such as mongrels or spiders, which, by the way, it totally looks like the spiders are chasing down the cattle to attack here. I mean, this has to be more brutal than AK or Crucio. If we can actually witness spiders attack and devour cows in this game, no way, right? No way. I mean, we do see the cows kind of take off running, so hopefully they're pretty fast. But speaking of those unforgivable curses, how exactly will they work in Hogwarts Legacy? The second part of the showcase focused on combat, and I have a video all about the unforgivable curses and how they were used in that scene, ready for you next, here on the right side of your screen. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.